And hello everyone and welcome to our Let's Play of Satellite Rain. We're going to go ahead and dive in here as soon as we finish loading up. So for those of you who don't know, Satellite Rain was a Kickstarter game. Or Kickstarter game, I suppose, not a Kickstarter game. It's not made by Kickstarter, it's made by um, the fine folks who made this game. Who are not Kickstarter at all. And I totally don't know their name, but they're just, the link to their website is in the video description below. Anyway... It's a spiritual successor to the game Syndicate. If you've never played Syndicate, it's a top-down squad strategy game shooter, I think, is a good amalgamation of genres there. Um, basically what happens is that in the grimdark future, uh, the world has been taken over by corporations, and as a result, um, basically life sucks for anyone not part of the corporation. Hey. You know, shit happens. So let's go ahead and log in here, and I believe we start out as one of the minor corporations trying to fight our way to the top. Um, but we're going to have a cutscene here that's going to tell us everything. So I've done a couple of tests, um, as you can tell by cutscene tests. We're going to go ahead and delete these and recreate our piece of the universe here. Uh, assume that I can actually spell. That'd be great. Thank you. Uh, game modes. Um, there's an Iron Man mode. We're totally not going to do that. There's an Uber Damage mode, which I believe is increased damage by our units. I don't know if it's all units. Well, maybe it is all, like, enemies and good guys, which means I guess combat would resolve a lot faster. If not, if it's just our units... In that case, that's easy mode. Either way, not too sure about doing that, so we're not going to do that. Real time with pause sounds like a great idea, right? But actually, what it does is just give you a team stim skill, or skill rather. And then when that's once that's done, that's it. So it doesn't really give you real time with pause. It just kind of emulates it, sort of, within the bounds of the game. It's not. It's not a thing. Let's not do it. So let's go ahead and jump in here and choose ourselves a company logo, apparently. So this is going to be a blind playthrough. Most of my playthroughs are blind. Um, but I anticipate this is going to be a lot of fun. There are a lot of company logos to choose from. I kind of like the Romulan Star Empire, the one I've selected, but kind of like the Atom here, though that's not really an Atom, I know, but it's close enough. Or we're going to be really patriotic. Should we be patriotic today? Maybe we should be patriotic. Do like, oh, that's really dark. Um, maybe a light blue star? Actually, I have no idea what that's going to be up against. Is that going to be up against, like, a black background? Because if so, then that's really dark. If it's going to be up against a white background, though... I don't know, I kind of like the other star, maybe? Sure, let's do that. That's good and indicative of being a piece of the universe. I don't like the blue, though. Let's do... Yeah, yellow totally works. Cycle through the other colors here. See if any of these strike my fancy... Um, no, actually, yellow seems to be the best. So we're going to go with yellow star. Let's do it. Okay, so we're about to hit the cutscene here as we log into our satellite. That's where the name comes from, is because you're controlling your agents through a satellite connection. So you have a satellite rain. Get it? Get it? Oh, and we laughed and laughed. Okay, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and let these guys talk. Pioneer, Dracogenics is making headlines with what they're calling instant consciousness transferal technology. But many are already referring to it as resurrection tech. Investors are scrambling for a piece of Dracogenics. The list of wealthy donors has increased with celebrities and politicians from around the world jumping on board. The Restech satellite network has expanded globally, making Dracogenics a household name overnight. Allegations swirling today as rivals accuse Dracogenics of trading immortality for political influence. Federal authorities are called to investigate. Continuing Drake. civil unrest today following the privatization of city services. Dracogenic security forces clashed with rioters all through the night. Dracogenic CEO Stephen Dangler was exonerated today as the newly appointed judge dismissed the charges, calling them, quote, frivolous and unfounded. Dracogenics have nobly provided their own private security force to assist in subduing the last stubborn holdouts of the city's poor and desperate. They announced the offenders are safely confined to the lower levels of the city where the conflict... responded today to claims of a new threat from a shadowy corporate rival. 
Answering a call to action from stockholders, Mr. Dangler denied rumors of Restex secrets being stolen in an act of corporate espionage. It's just in. We're hearing that city police have apprehended a suspect related to the wave of recent anti-dracogenics attacks. City security forces have the suspect now in custody after a gunfight with police that left several dead. Come in. Come in. Okay, come Zara go. Hi, I'm your company contact, providing mission intel and support. Call me Tag. I'll supply data to assist with side jobs. But remember our overall mission here, breaking Dengler's monopoly on ResTech and taking the authority and power it gives him. We're running a ResTech system ourselves, but it's flaky as hell. Its range is limited to our relay beacons and there are no long-term backups. So if you lose an agent, don't wait all day before hitting upload. It's not perfect, but it might just give us the edge we need. We've re-established a signal with one of our agents but the others are scattered, so the first thing we need to do is to reassemble the team. Voice comms will be minimal for most of the op. Communications are heavily monitored in the city, so encrypted text is our most secure way of keeping in touch. I'll open up voice channels again when necessary. Good luck. You're gonna need it. Tag out. So we're just testing our camera controls here, as you can tell, by doing the tutorial. We can always select our agent, it looks like, for pressing the appropriate number, and move with right mouse click. You guys won't see my mouse on the screen, but you'll see effects on my mouse, like right there, as we can go up into cover. Um, you see we can do that. He'll hunch down if the cover is low enough. We should probably sprint over here, so um, yeah, we can't do that because the thing's in the way. There we go. Alright, so responding to the basics, since you're your soldier out there, let's get into cover and fire off a few rounds over here. Sure. So let's go. And we have ourselves a red shirt bad guy who's just there to die. Alright, so now we go ahead and select our weapon. Take out our Uzi, it looks like. And then go ahead and open fire. Yeah, he looks like he was totally taken by surprise. He just stood there for like three whole seconds. Fortunately, he has armor. Well, fortunately for him. Unfortunately for us. And are we just going to stand there? Apparently, the AI is at least smart enough. Well, I was going to say smart enough to duck down when they're being fired at, but that only held true for so long. Okay, and we can press space to toggle our weapons off. Got it. Okay. So let's go ahead and open it using the terminal. Sure. So I've done the tutorial a couple of times doing tests. Um, it turns out this game can run at 120 FPS if your system so allows. Um, my system will allow it, but it won't record at that. And so the result was a bunch of jankiness, um, which was horrible, and it looked really, really bad. So I may be cheating a little bit by forcing it to reduce down to 60, but hopefully you guys will forgive me for the benefit of decent videos. I say decent videos and not great videos because, you know, come on. I'm going to be bad at this. It's going to happen. I'm going to die multiple times, most likely. Um, most likely our agents are going to get wiped out several times in a row. Um, probably not at the beginning, but eventually. And this is the weird part about this tutorial. It doesn't actually tell you where to go. But you're supposed to be curious enough about this beacon over here that you'll send your agent over and go, hey, what's this thing? Oh, I have to actually select my guy. There we go. Tell him to go over here. And there we go. Now this is a good place to deploy one of our relay beacons. Sure, these are basically save points. Um, they are also fast travel points. If we have multiple relay beacons up, we can fast travel to any of them. So far that hasn't been a huge deal, as far as I can tell, but later on that'll probably help us a lot. So we have our second agent, somehow materialized by the relay point. I'm guessing these are also act as teleporters. I mean, if they act as fast travel, that must be what happens. Uh, so let's go ahead and come up here and see what we can do about this locked door. And we can't actually get over there, so let's go ahead and hack this door with number one here. And what do you know, it turns out this is a trick, because it always is, because it's a tutorial. So if we do the world scan ability, which is also done with the Y, but we can also just click here. And now we can scan over and see that this red line goes to this other door. Well, that's handy. 
or other thing. That actually doesn't make any sense at all now that I think about it. Because what are the chances you're going to have two guards on patrol and then you separate them? Does that seem really weird? Why would you do that? It doesn't make any sense at all. But anyway, she comes over here, she punches a couple buttons, and this should be long enough so I don't have to worry. Oh, you know what? I need to have him do it at the same time. Okay, now she can run over here. And that should give us enough time. If she goes through, and then he goes through. Yeah, there we go. Both went through the same time. We're good. Okay. So we're supposed to slip past this guard. That guard right there. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, go ahead and sneak as best we can. He's not even looking in our direction, so this is going to be the easiest patrol to get by ever. So yeah, why don't you guys come over here. Yeah, just keep low to the ground. Low to the ground. Low to the grow is what I said. Okay, so he's going to pass by. That's fine. Wait for him to turn around at the corner over here. Which he's going to do eventually. The benefits of doing this before. Um, the tutorial is about as far as I got, just at the end of the tutorial. So I'll let you know when that happens. And that's my pretty much my whole experience. So you guys go ahead and run over here. Okay. And then we just need to leave before he turns around, which is dead simple. Just go at the door. He's not even going to notice us, so we're fine. And there's a new message about stealth. So all the messages, as we do these, are all going to be in the log. So you see here we have a whole bunch of messages about basics, which is good tutorial information, if a little dry. Um, all stuff about attacking. All stuff about cover. Alert levels and reinforcements. So that's something that it talked about, but I didn't point out really. Is um, you'll see we have down at the uh, along the side of each of these profiles, we have alert levels. And so right now we're level, alert level zero, but when we're in like a restricted area or we're trespassing or something, it'll let us know that you know guys are basically going to shoot us on sight. It's going to happen. Um, right now though, we're up in a civilian area. And you see a bunch of civilians walking around over here. And sure enough, it's going to tell us. Yep, there we go. So with your weapons away, you can waltz right through crowds of civilians without causing a panic. And there's something difficult about this terminal up ahead. This terminal, way over here, is what they're talking about. So if you select the terminal, you can see what you need to get past. So we select it, and we have ourselves on the left-hand side. You see hacker level required 1. So we need someone with the hacker skill. What are skills? Well, that's a different thing then, isn't it? It's um, down here in a loadout, and you can see skills. And you can see this guy doesn't have hacking at all. So what about this girl? Does she have any hacking? She doesn't have any hacking, so that's a problem, right? Well, that's okay. Because the hacker's inside this complex waiting extraction. They're talking about this complex here uh, with the big red door. I just circled it with my cursor and realized you guys can't see that. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring our guys over here. Uh, one and two. Can you come over here, please? Thank you. So use the world scan ability to identify who has security access to the compound. So we do this, and somebody's going to come by here and look yellow. There she is. There she is. Let's bribe them and get the security guard. Security codes. So we'll select, say, number one. Press on her. We'll come over here and talk to her. Hello. I'd like to pay you 50 bucks for your security key, please. Thank you kindly. That's nice and copied. And then we can go ahead and extract our guy. So let's get our hacker out of there. He just goes in there, does something unidentified, and then he'll come out with a friend eventually. There we go. So there we go. One, two, and three. So we brought a couple of new messages now. Let's go ahead and look at those. So we have scanning, which basically tells us about the support agent's world scan. Only the support agent can do it. That's important. Each one of these guys can only have a certain type of skill. So stealth. Yeah, so you know whether or not they're in cover. They will investigate suspicious sounds regardless of visual blockers. That's important. If you have a lot of gunfire or some noisy, that'll draw their attention. So loadouts tell you about augments and gear. Uh, if they learn the pack mule skill, they'll get extra gear slots. So they must carry one pistol. Pistols have info and ammo. The additional weapon, though, is limited ammo. 
So the Uzi we used had limited ammo, which is good to know. Um, we can pick up ammo in other places, but I didn't do that when I killed the other guy. As soon as you kill a guy, they usually drop ammo. Okay, object information. When you left click, you can get stats, which is good to know. Interacting with citizen, usually just right click. They'll talk to him or bribe him or something. You can bribe researchers to follow you, add them to your research pool. That is good to know. I did not know that, actually. See, reading tutorials is good. Read the documentation. I say that only as a tech writer, really. Okay, so you need a lot of funds. You need lots of money. Um, so the Infiltrator's Master Thief skill allows the agent to steal even more money when entering facilities. Send the hacker into district banks will increase the rate of income from the siphoned ATM. So you can actually siphon ATMs. It says that in the second bullet there. Send the soldier into district banks will breach the vault and steal a large one-off sum of money. That's tempting. We'll see if we can do that later. And your agents will need funds to survive on the field where it's paying for research, buying gear, or fast-tracking respawns. Yeah, I haven't actually had to deal with the respawn thing yet, but it's probably going to happen. Okay, so we have our hacker. Let's come over here. And let's go ahead and select our hacker and bring him over here so we can hack it. Can ya hack it? Can ya? And sure enough, he can. Great. Let's all waltz through the door here. And go ahead and tap that research beacon. Research. That's not a research beacon. What am I thinking of? That What's a research beacon? Research beacon. Oh, you know what it is? I was playing Galactic Civilization. That's totally what that is. Okay, so we tap the beacon, and, um, oh, okay, they want us to hit escape so we can equip our agents. So we have, we can go to our loadout, and we can equip a silencer on this pistol, which is actually pretty good. This pistol has infinite ammo, so we'll go ahead and attach a silencer to it, and the graphic for the pistol didn't actually change, did it? Maybe it changed slightly. I'm just used to a silencer being like an attachment in the front, but there's no reason for that because that's a Hollywood silencer and those don't work very well in real life anyway. So, all right, so that's our guy. It's okay, we did it. So we need to go up here and use the zip line because it's the only way out, basically. So you can force your agents to do a bunch of stuff, but they do have skill points, and if they're not trained in it, they're not going to do well. And this teaches us about that. So let's go ahead and hit Alt, and tell these guys to go ahead and use the force. Use the use the force. Yeah, uh, force them to use the zip line. So they'll do this more or less one at a time, and they come down here. Oh, and our uh, hacker is not so spry. You'll see the timer ticking down there. We need to go ahead and revive him. So we just click on him and he will be revived and then we don't have to worry about having to spawn heaven at the next relay station um, if all your agents go down i think it's game over but i don't know i haven't actually gotten to that point yet i tried a bunch of silly stuff and um, i just reloaded the game when i ran out of agents okay so this is probably going to require yeah hacker level one okay so come over here buddy you'll see the health does regen if they're allowed. Um, it is a regen over time. I have no idea if you can go up to full health. I think so, but I'm not sure. It's so, okay. Now we send one guy in. Equip your silence pistol. So we can do Alt-1. And there we go. So let's go ahead and bring our soldier up here. And you see here where we have the... So you have your weapons out. That is a bad thing. That puts you on alert level 1. But he has our back his back to us, so we should be able to come over here. It's like right over here. Okay, you're gonna be picky about it, really? Okay, there we go. And go ahead and pop him in the neck. That was probably a little too close, but still worked. Okay, two and three, why don't you come up over here? Okay, so time to put your new skills to the test. It's whether or not you can go through this. So that would disappear kind of fast, but basically we need to get to this door over here. So there's a camera there. There are at least two guards. But nothing else we need to worry about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to this. And we're going to disable the camera system. 
Although that's really unnecessary because we're going to sneak around this side and get in through here when the guard's backs are turned. So let's go ahead and do it. Want all you guys, and assuming no one's coming this way. Okay, so we just got to wait here for a little while. Um, yeah, why don't you guys come over here just in case he comes the long way. I don't actually remember what his plot is, but no, actually that was probably a good idea. Okay, and then we can sneak in, like, right behind him. And why don't we go ahead and run it? Probably made a little bit of noise when running, but I think we're okay. And they ran out of stamina really fast. Okay, so what is the alert level? So we're all trespassing. Okay, so basically they'll shoot us on sight. Good to know. So let's go ahead and get our hacker and tell him to disable the camera. Just because what the hell, we could use the practice. In the meantime, you guys come up and go over here. Okay, so the camera's disabled, which is good. Um, what I don't necessarily like is that you can't rotate the camera. And I'm not just talking about the camera we disabled, I'm talking about any camera ever. Um, okay, we'll wait for this guy to pass. Um, he probably won't be able to see us anyway. So we're probably fine. Oh, you know what? We can put our, ca our uh, gun away, can't we? That'll probably help in case we get caught. Okay, so there's a door here that's locked, and of course we're going to have to get the hacker to do it. So come on over here, Mr. Hacker. I probably should have just sent you out, but it's nice to keep you guys all together. Not strictly necessary. If you get one agent caught and not shot down, then um, they can act as a good distraction. So, okay, Tag wants us to set up some relay beacons around the district, and we have the issue of our capture infiltrator to attend to. So we can go to our mission control and look at our dossier. So we have the ResTech, which we basically want to steal. It's basically what this says. So if we rescue the infiltrator, okay, so he has important intel. And he's in the prison, so if we activate the ping, we get to tell where that is. And what do you know, he's in the police station and holding. Well, that's just dandy. We can purchase information to find out how to get in. Um, I will do that if only for story reasons. I already purchased his information, but I don't know what it was. Um, okay, so there's a secondary entrance on the western side of the complex with an unlocked door that's mostly ignored and half as security at best. Okay, okay, I kind of see that. Also, there's some leftover crap from a construction project from a few months back. Great way over the fence if you got the right gear. Okay, so that's another thing where you can zip line, but we don't have the skills or gear for that. So we could risk a three-story drop, which would seriously injure one of our agents. So that seems like a riskier way in. We could do it, though. Could totally do it, but I think the simpler way in is going to be the west side entrance. Okay, so let's go back and see the other dossier. So we're deep in the heart of the city. Okay, so everything's for sale, especially information. We cough, cough up the cash and get us some good intel. So sure, spend another 200. We'll do, what the hell? So, what does this say? Okay, so this tells us about the Wyverns, who are a gang who got themselves some corporate sponsorship. So basically, they're acting as the police for the area. All right, so big gangs are on patrol, so be careful not to draw their attention. If they try to arrest your agents, just play along, and if you're lucky, you'll get away with a fine or a kick in the back. Well, a fine would be bad. We don't have a lot of money, but still, that's better than getting shot, as long as you play along. Got it. Okay. So relay beacons. So you'll see on the map here, we have relay beacon locations that we can set up. Um, you'll see the red things on the map. Automated sentry church, something we probably want to stay away from or disable. And then we have a jammer, but that's past the yellow line, so I don't know what that means. Probably don't want to get there yet. And that pretty much covers all of the available things. Oh, there's a legend. Okay, so we see the police, police station. Okay, so the gray means possible relay beacon location. We just haven't set them up yet. And the white are the ones we've actually set up, which are probably all behind us, right? Yep, all behind us. All right. Good to know. And then find information broker. So Jack Rabbit operates here in downtown. Best info broker you could want. 
runs a tight operation and hooked up us up with one of his most trusted informants. So, Mr. Will Ernst, you should be able to confirm him with the support fa agents, facial recognition systems that runs when you trigger the world scan. So, it'll show up yellow on the world scan, basically. And he's at the Dirty Zen. So, we'll activate that ping and we see where he is. Okay. That's actually not too far. Why don't we go ahead and hit this. We'll hit this beacon first and then and then the next beacon and then circle around and get to our contact information broker whatever the hell you want to call him okay that's all the dossiers we have access to so that's that okay so this is i think officially the point where i left the tutorial it was right after i looked at all the missions and that was it so from here on folks it's all blind so let's go ahead and no, that's funny. Did that one not show up on the map? Oh no, it totally did. I just didn't see it. Alright, guys, come over here. Um, is there a way to get rid of this message? Because we've made some progress here. Yeah, you said it's in the dossier. We've already looked at the dossiers. We'd like that message to go away now, please. Clicking on it does nothing. Dragging on it does nothing. It's just stuck there. Okay, so try to ignore this big blinking box as well as you can, folks, because I don't know how to get rid of it. Just how it goes, I guess. Alright, so... Auto saves... Oh, okay, so it auto saves every time we do a beacon. That's also good to know. Um, there's also probably periodic saves, but... We will do that after every episode, just so I'm caught up on where we are. So I think we're in a civilian area, so we should be able to... Well, there's no alerts on our characters, so that pretty much means we can go wherever we like, and we won't be stopped or harassed or anything else. So you'll see up in the minimap in the top left that the pings are still active, which is good, because otherwise we'd be totally lost. So do we need a hacker for this? Hacker level required two. I don't know, man. Try it anyway. You might do it. No, you're not even going to try? Really? <laughs> I like that. I accidentally selected the door. It's a door. There are holes in things that are sometimes closed. When they're not closed, people and things can move through them. Gee, thanks. Can we actually go through the door? Oh. All right, we're in business. The company's got me all set up to help us take Dengler down. His control over Dracogenics gives him control over Restech, and his control over Restech gives him control over everyone who wants it. I helped smuggle an older version out of their R&D labs, and we're going to use it to keep your agents in the field despite casualties. But that's a short-term fix. Long-term, a benefactor has supplied us with a virus that we can use to take control of his Restech satellite systems. Ultimately, our plan is for you to get into Dracogenic's main tower to install the virus directly into their hardware. Right now, though, we've got to build up our company's presence here, working on getting you all the gear, money, and tech that we'll need to make that final assault. I don't think they're going to let us just waltz through the front door. Okay, good to know. So basically we're trying to build up so we can do a final mission for this area. Got it. And that just lets us know that's true. So good, I guess. All right, go back. Yeah, I can't go through the door. Okay, big surprise. Um, unless, no, hacker level hasn't re decreased because of story reasons. So let's go this way, I guess. And see what we can see. So you'll notice a couple of these things are blinking and have stuff. This is kind of hardwire. If you were paying attention, and you might have been, um, you'll see in the loadout skills, um, there's a hardwire skill. Costs one skill point. We don't actually don't have any skill points yet, but we are gradually building up XP. We're just not quite level one, really. That's how low we start. We're not even level one yet. Okay, what about this? That is also hacker level required two. So that's all right, I guess, for now. And we'll just climb up here. Did I mention it is it totally dystopia? Because it is. You can tell that by all the bums on the street. Um, and they're not necessarily bums. They could just be, you know, down in their luck. Not able to get a job. No augments, anything like that. So there's a camera there. I don't know if we need to necessarily avoid the camera. We're in a civilian area. Anybody's allowed to walk along. 
Um, so I don't think we need to avoid the camera necessarily. I mean, I'm still going to do it as much as possible, and as soon as I find this beacon, where the heck... Okay, we keep scrolling. Okay, there's the beacon in shadow over there, so we can only see as far as our agents can basically see. So we're going to go ahead and run over here. Or lightly jog, actually, because running draws attention. Yeah. It's a hardwire skill. We're not going to do that. So you'd think this is a big problem, right? Because the car's just coming out of there at incredible pace. But, in fact, they will totally slow down for you. So you can cross the streets with impunity. Don't worry. You won't get run over. And maybe no cars will come at all. So how do we get... Okay, we go down this way. Gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, we go down this way. And yeah, we're good. Okay, so climb up here, and we should be able to get to that relay beacon. Uh, for some reason, I imagine that the relay beacon would allow us to, or being at the relay beacon would allow us to go like straight north to the other one, but apparently we're going to have to work our way around. Well, in Syndicate, in Syndicate, you'd be able to get a Persuadatron and persuade random civilians to join you. One of the best things I loved about Syndicate was turning the Persuadatron on high and gathering like 50 civilians to act as fodder while my agents went in and blasted up the place with miniguns. And they'd be totally safe, or more or less safe, because they'd have a shield, well, meat shield, really, is what it would come down to. Okay, so we just tagged that beacon. Um, so let's look at control. Okay, so that was that relay beacon. Let's go ahead and set the other custom ping for here. Um, set the custom ping for here, I said. There we go. That worked. Now the trick is to head to the right ping. But that shouldn't be too difficult. All right, so we're gonna, just going to go up the street, I guess. Preferably on the sidewalk, if you, you know, listen to me. And then probably straight up. I'm trying to see where the beacon is. Oh, there it is over there. Okay. So basically straight up um, on the sidewalk still. However you want to get over here, okay? I'm not going to judge you. You want to go on the street, and fine, but I prefer you stay on the sidewalk. Okay. Um, they're not drawing any specific attention. I'm just some weird guys in overcoats. Well, two weird guys and a girl, I guess. Yeah, so the hardware points we just see, and there we go. There's our relay beacon down there. So they're probably all going to be tucked away in neat little places. Why is there a camera thing there? What camera could that possibly control? Oh, it must be that one. But why would you care? Maybe if you want to get in this door? That's got to be it, right? But, okay, I have so many questions. Okay, fine. Let's go ahead and hit the beacon. And then we'll autosave again, I guess. I'm assuming that's what those do. Though it seems to be periodically autosaving. Oh, and we got new dossiers. Interesting. Okay. What other missions do we have? District downtown. We have, wow, five bacon beacons. Okay. So, send a message to the Eternals. That must be the guys who have the resurrection tech. Okay, so if you go into the CSA... You can tamper with the facial recognition software, making our lives easier. Which means the cameras are 50% slower. That sounds really useful. So where's that at? Oh, that's like right there. Okay. Good to know. What else can we do? We can go to the bank. Okay, so this is where we can hack into the ATMs and then send the hacker in or send the soldier in to get a big boost of cash. Okay, and there's a bank right there. All right. Oh, yeah, probably could have just activated the ping instead of looking for it. Good to know. Ronin Incorporated Drone Repairs. So get your engine in the main facility, and we should be able to use what to our advantage. Sorry, I skipped over. So it's filled with parts, completed droids, droids that need repairs, that sort of thing. But the city's maintenance droids also use this place as a repair and fuel station. These little guys are everywhere and have access to almost every part of the city. Oh, that could be useful. Where's that at? That is... Okay. Huh. Pass some security checkpoints if you go back that way, but we could... Might be able to go in through the front door? It's hard to tell. 
Hard to tell. Okay. What else we got? Dracogenesis guard station. So we get an infiltrator in there. We can uh, slow down the reinforcement call. So that's probably this right here. Okay. Let's make sure. Yep, that's it. And then the military compound. So we can purchase some new information. That's probably... Oh, we have three things inside the military compound. So in the enforced control... Armory is the heart of the complex. The docks are south of it, barracks to the north. This will be a tough one. Huh. I bet. So where's that at? Oh, okay. Right next to where we are. Um, hmm. So barracks for new recruits. Military supply docks. And armory. We could spend a lot of cash on all this information. So let's not do that yet. Let's see if we can gather up cash in other ways. Oh, and my timer just went off because it's about time to end the episode. So I'll go ahead and do that. In fact, let's go ahead and save so we know where we are. And yeah, save game. There we go. And so that'll be it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. This has been the first episode of Satellite Rain. I'm PC Universe. You're PC Universe 2, and I'll see you guys next time.